You know that we think at Catch the Fire Worship Flags, it's not enough just to have a worship flag. You need to know how to use your worship flags effectively. And that is the key word, effectively. Today, join me for a Fire Catchers chat when I am talking to Pat Dwyer and she's gonna share what she teaches worshipers just like you. Stay tuned. Catchers to another Fire Catchers chat. My name is Andrea York with Catch the Fire Worship Flags, and today I have an incredibly special guest. Not only is Pat Dyer becoming a friend, I'd like to say, but we have we've started connecting, and I needed you guys, the Fire Catchers, to know about her breakthrough flags ministries. What she is doing. Not only does she take worship flags is the tool but she teaches you how to use them she is a decorated author she's written a few books she's got a ton of resources i know that she has a course that she guides and mentors you and we're going to talk about all of that today so welcome pat thank you so very much andrea i appreciate it i'm so glad that we were able to connect and do things for the lord and the kingdom of god okay so see y'all we have an international connection going on God is doing big things across the continent. That's right. Be, our, our friendship be, makes it, this is an international affair. Yes. That's so fantastic. So you, just for our listeners, you're based out of New York. You want to just talk to me a little bit about how you started Breakthrough Flag Ministries. Well, I guess, as you said, I am in New York. And Breakthrough Flags Ministry, actually, God did that. Because in my, I took, I was going for praise dancing and I, you know, went through some praise dance schools and did all the things. And I just knew I was going to have this praise dance group. And then as you go along, God just begins to reveal things to you. And I remember the first time I picked up the flag, I was flagging and I was like, this is really good. And it brought back something to remembrance. I remember as a young person going out hanging out and stuff. When I used to close my eyes, I actually used to see color. I used to see color whipping by and I'd be like, y'all don't see color. Like when you're dancing and stuff, I would close. But at that moment, God showed me that that's what he was preparing me for back then. And when I picked up the flag, it was such an extension of my worship that I started to learn more about it because it gave me an avenue to share the word of God in a different manner. And that's how Breakthrough Flags Ministry came about. So I'm going to tell you that that's actually how Catch the Fire Worship Flags started as well. That in, I would see, I'm not a singer. We didn't have dancing in our churches. It was very conservative churches. Dancing was more or less just kind of sinful. And the only way with which you could worship the Lord was through song. And I cannot sing at all. It is a joyful noise when I make it to the Lord, but it is, there's, there's nothing beautiful about my voice. And so I would just be quiet and I would close my eyes and I would see color kind of just dancing on airway. And it would be about my imagination. And I would chastise myself and I would say, get it together, girl. We're worshiping the Lord. Don't let your imagination go wild. Um, And it wasn't until I was much later in life where I stepped into a church that had worship flags for the, and that was the first time I was 35 years old when I saw that for the very Mm -hmm. first time. And I thought that is what I see in my head. And Mm -hmm. the Lord actually brought me into teaching me about movement and color and sound and color. I actually, in my head, I see like words and phrases always come to me in color. Like it's Mm -hmm. an explosion in my mind's eye and my imagination of color. And I thought everyone, this happened to everyone. I'm like, what? You, you don't, you don't see like, yeah, say you don't see that like anointing is purple. You don't see that like that doesn't immediately spread out in your mind. It's a psychological phenomenon. It's called senesia and where color and sounds kind of go hand in hand. I, I started to recreate what I was seeing in my yes. head. Yes. We've talked to several times and that was not the story that I didn't know that story. So that's nope. fantastic. Yeah, definitely. And it was like, it was like, a, to me, it felt like I came full circle. I was like, oh, that's why I used to see those colors. 
And I just, I just loved it. I, and still love it today. Okay. So you, let me ask you another question. So when you started to see the, the colors and, and started to use flags, what changed about your worship? Like, how did that change your worship? Well, I've always been a pe- person who likes to gather people, build community, have people share and come together. And when I started using flags, one of the things that struck me was that I was able to share my heart or share the Lord's heart without words. And how I really got into it was because there was a time in my life when things were all over the place. I mean, I was totally lost. And this was before I knew the Lord. And my heart was so hardened that I couldn't hear a word that wasn't going to do anything for me. And so when I went to this church, this young lady was singing and that's how Jesus saw me. That's all I can't remember the name of it, but that was the name of it. And that's how mercy saw me. And literally I just felt the hardness in my heart to begin to melt away. And at the end, it says, it's not what I was, but what I will, what I should be. That's how Jesus saw me. And I just lost it. And I learned right then the power of music and movement. And so I am not a singer either. I knew singing wasn't going to be the route I was going to use. But I was able to, when I when I picked up the flags and I started worshiping with them, that's what came back to me. So that's what has changed for me, being able to share my heart or like most likely the most important thing is share God's heart to others. And I find it's a way that allows people to be ministered to and they don't even know they're being ministered to. It's yes. Secret. And that's what it is. Yes. yes. That's what it is. And, and it's powerful. And as the flags move and the Holy Spirit begins to move, that heart and heart begins to move. And that's, I feel, has changed me and wanting to learn how I can effectively and more responsibly and purposefully use these tools to, um, I always say, I love the scripture where it talks about out of the darkness and into the light. That's for me what flags do. They say, come on, you don't got to stay there anymore. Come on over here. Jesus has something for you. And that's what it's taken. That is, I mean, again, that's, that's why I'm so attracted to what you carry and why I think that. I just, I have so much value and honor for what you're doing for the kingdom, what you're doing specifically for a flagging community. We have, I think we kind of, we talked about this in a, a previous phone call where even in churches where they have flag ministers or movement ministers, and they appreciate it. A lot of, a lot of the fire catchers that we have in our community are completely alone in their love of it, even in their permission to use them in, in worship services. But even if you are in a, if you're, if you are fortunate and blessed enough to be in a church where there's where there's like a, a larger ministry group the the number is still very small in proportion to the congregational size yes. so at most you might have you know one to five percent of a congregation that might appreciate worship flags and so it's still very possible to feel alone or it feels mm-hmm. like it's like you're all it always feels like you're coming against this spirit of well isn't she just trying or he just trying to be showy isn't mm-hmm. like and they don't understand so what you've just said about there's something secret and um, I will ask you this because you have a lot of flagging ministers come through your programs and use your materials and learn from your materials. What do you say to the one that says, well, I know that I'm called to flag and my pastor doesn't let me. So how do I make him see my gifting and my anointing? And they always say it in that voice. (laughs) Well, when I first flag started flagging and dancing, I wasn't readily accepted into my congregation either because actually it was somebody else that was doing it. And I said, okay, but somebody, because I guess God will send you who you need. And somebody said to me, who said that the gifting that God and anointing God gave you was for your house? And I was like, taken back. I said, well, who said it was for your house? Every flag has an assignment. I know mine's his family because what I said earlier that I know that, you know, my family was saved. Maybe your assignment is single women or single moms and you go to a shelter. Maybe it's the uh, the prison ministry. Our ministry, Jesus wasn't conformed to the temple. He was out in the streets. And so I would say to them, why don't you sit down and ask God where he wants you to use your ministry? Your job is to learn about it. 
Your job is to spend time with him. Your job is to get the assignment, to go to the throne room and let him guide you and everything else will come to pass. And that's exactly what happened. As time went on, I went out and I ministered and I did other things. I went other places. And now I'm the director of the women's ministry at our church for the last 20 years. And that's what I would tell them. Don't get caught up on where you think the gifting should be released. Ask God where he wants it to be released. I mean, come on, sister, preach that. That preaches right there. I It actually brought to mind the way that Paul of the, of the New Testament was called. He was persecuting the mm-hmm. Jews and they didn't readily welcome him into their, mm. their community. I mean, for good reason. Yes. I, and so, so he knew that he was called into ministry, but he wasn't called to the Jews. He was called to the Gentiles. Mm-hmm. And so he, and so God had an assignment. And I, if I can share even kind of, kind of my own story and my own assignment, I also didn't start. I, I started in, I started flagging when I was at a very conservative church. The one thing that I, I was in ministry at the time, I was a woman's director at the time. And so I had keys to the church. So I was able to go into the church off hours and worship. And that was a season where the Lord was teaching me. Holy Spirit was teaching me about movement, about Mm -hmm. scripture, understanding that. But I know that I'm actually called to the two nations and I have regional authority. And where I go, I tend to worship outside. So that was where I would go. And I have been to the, to the Himalayas in like the high places in Tibet and Tan down to the Pacific ocean from like the ocean to the skies. And I know, I know that I know that I know that I'm called into regionally declaring and that worship flags are a prophetic statement where the word of the Lord, Isaiah 55, 11 says that the word of the Lord does not return void. It will accomplish its purpose. And so it doesn't matter if I don't have an assembly to minister right. in front of, I am ministering for myself. Some people are called to minister to the people mm-hmm. on behalf of God. Some people are called directly to minister to God. I know that I'm to bring down strongholds in the heavenlies without fighting or lifting any other weapon except for my worship flags. I do that and the and God will do the rest. I just simply worship um, in the places that he calls me to. That is just beautiful. I usually say when someone says, well, I I am called and they're not releasing me. And I say, well, then just, just don't like wait. Like it's not, your anointing is not going to be, is not dependent on, on what God does. Or I mean, sorry, it's dependent. Does. On what it is not dependent on what man does. David mm-hmm. was anointed for seventeen years before mm-hmm. he took the the place. And like you, you're the women's director now at your church. I was not recognized in the prophetic gifting. I am now the prophetic director of my church, and which the irony of God is so strong on that one. Like he's just got this great sense of humor. But also, I'm I'm of course I'm I'm in a church where I'm welcome and invited to to use worship yes. flags. And that took that was years. It was years before yep. that. Mm-hmm. I, and I remember one time we were at a women's retreat, and I was talking about you know the Bible says we're peculiar people. So like when you get around other people who are worshiping. Is like Especially this just an excitement. flaggers. Flaggers are peculiar people. <laughs> people, you know, there's just an excitement about us, you know, sharing about some things. And I never get this woman said to me, never will there be dancing in this church. I just looked at her. I didn't say anything, but you know, seeds are planted along the way. And I remember one day we was having praise and worship and I saw the pastor doing a little two-step and I got up and went into the vestibule and just started crying. I said, thank you, Father. Cause see, I didn't have to do, it wasn't about me. I didn't have to do anything. I brought it to you. And I was like, okay. And I just saw it. I just saw it. And now everybody does a two-step. Okay. So, but it took a while. It took a while for people to be released into their worship. And I think that's another thing too. It says when we use flags, we flags help you help people to release themselves and to worship because as the flag is flowing and it begins to flow in the spirit and in the atmosphere, we begin to move in the atmosphere. That's one of the powerful things about flags. So I have a question for you. Yes. Okay. So now I make flags. Okay. I make flags, but I am not a flag maker. And so I want you to tell me because you are a flag maker. What would you think is the difference between somebody who makes flags and a flag appointed divinely by the Lord flag maker? 
Yeah, that's a, that's a great question. And it doesn't, it doesn't, I'm going to answer that question. And I want to say anybody who's just making their, their own flags out of, out of just a heart, a necessity, there's no other resources, flags can be cost prohibitive. And so we do with what we use, what God gives us in the moment, but as a flag maker, as, as someone who has been serving worshipers since 2011, so we're going on to like 13 years here as a flag maker, they are, and I mentioned this before, a prophetic statement and a declaration. So the Lord is actually caught. So I would even say as a prophetic flag maker, it is partnering with the Lord that, that I'm understanding. I understood my call as a prophet first mm-hmm. as a flag maker, because I was seeing color and on sound waves or the sound. So either it's a scripture or or it's a phrase, and I translate that into color. So God's first language is not English. It's not even Hebrew. He speaks in so many languages, and color is a language. And so as a flag maker, I think that it is recognizing the anointing that God has. We talked about anointing, and that's such a that's such a charismatic Christianese word. But it's it's to break the down the anointing, it is the the particular gifting that Holy Spirit has given to me, that the things that are on me that he has given me, I can release that through the worship flags. There is an anointing that does flow through it. There's a gifting that's imparted. We like that. That's a nice Christianese word too, is an impartation. (laughs) But what an impartation means is that you get something that you didn't earn. It's, it's a grace. It's a specific Mm -hmm, grace. We have, Christ has imparted his salvation to us um, and he's given us gifts. And and that's how we flow as a body. Not everyone is called to be the flag maker. Not everyone is called to be the dance teacher. Not, can we do some of those things? I can teach a few things, but Mm -hmm. then, then someone comes along with, with, and you just, you just know that there is, there is something else about what they carry that you realize that you don't and, and you honor it. So I feel like that, or not even I feel, I know that I know that I know that God has called me to be a flag maker, that I was to serve worshipers, put Mm -hmm. tools in their hands, help them to understand what those tools were not. I mean, a little bit, I think you, we're going to talk about your ministry and that's exactly what you do. And when, and it is to release the prophetic word, right? The word of the Lord does not return void. So it does not matter if, if you don't know who, what the word even says. Remarkably, so many times people have, I'll just give you an example. One time I was making a worship flag that it was called before the throne and it was the first flag that I had made. And my space was very small that I was making them in. This space isn't the biggest, but my, my workspace before was even smaller and I had low ceilings. And so there was no way that I could actually like let the flags fly. And so I had taken them out um, and I had taken them to church and there was a gathering and I was just kind of at the back. I was not worshiping. I let me like, my heart was just, I, I, I was just, I wanted to see what they looked like. And, and I took them out and I just opened them up and, Mm -hmm. and someone it was almost as if they had been not, and I didn't flog them. It was almost as if they had been knocked out. And she said, she looked back and she said, as soon as you opened the flags, it shifted something. Those flags took me right before the throne. Yes. The name of the flags did not know what they were called. That wow. is an, again and again and again, where the, even the ones that don't recognize what flags do, you'll, I'll something will happen and they'll all of a sudden start like beautiful offering that's happened several times when I've taken out beautiful offering in a, in a Mm -hmm. gathering where they've not really seen flags or used flags. Then all of a sudden the prophetic words are about offering yourself prostrate to the Lord as tears, like to wash his feet. And I'm like, yep, that's Lord, you're doing it. Um, And so it's that anointing on me as a flag maker. I think that that's what, why God honors catch the fire worship flags as as a business of what I'm doing for the community of worshipers. Wonderful. And so you asked me about breakthrough. So how did the name Catch the Fire Worship Flags come about? So fire flags are my, probably the signature worship flags. And there was, uh, I had had taken some photos of them. I didn't really have a name of 
of the business. It wasn't a business as it was, as it is today, but I had had these photos taken. There's this picture of I'm completely enveloped in the fire. Mm -hmm. And and it was like, I'm like grabbing onto the fire, the passion of Holy Spirit, of all that he is. And it was, don't let this moment pass. Don't let this. Throughout scripture, there is several instances where the Lord was going to let them pass. Moses being one of them, that this burning bush and and Moses, he saw it. And then there's a scripture in, in chapter three, where it says, and the Lord saw that he had turned away or mm -hmm. turned aside to look. So meaning that we can miss it. We can miss it. And I didn't want to miss this moment. It could have just been a really cool, you know, <laughs> photograph. Um, but I'm like, no, I'm grab. There's something more here, and hence catch the fire worship flags that gave the the foundation of the ministry. As I love, I love it. <laughs> so breakthrough flags ministry. You talked about how you started, but let's talk. I want to ask you because this is going to go into what it is actually that you are teaching. Because I just want to say before we get it, I you answer that question. I want to say I have taken one of your online workshops. And now Pat is a, she's formerly a preschool teacher, kindergarten teacher. And you know what? She takes something that can be so complex. We talked about Christianese words and I think over spiritualize things, make us sound so much more holy than we possibly are. Yes. And Pat breaks down the movements and not, not even the movements, like on how to create movements and about in such a simple way that a kindergartner would understand without making you feel stupid. So tell me more and tell the fire catchers, our, our audience more about your approach to teaching, what it is that you're teaching, just take it away. I love hearing you and hearing you talk about your ministry and what you're doing for the kingdom of God. Well, you know, so I see we are definitely kindred spirits because it's similar to what you were talking about. Like, don't let this moment pass by. Now I am not a, you know, a professionally trained dancer or flagger you know, and, but I know the passion that I had inside. I knew what God did for my family and being a teacher, you know, one of the things you deal with is families. And I seen, you know, the brokenness and the hurt in families. And I just have a heart for families because I know how God restored my family when we were broken. And so one of the things when I was, you know, like, Lord, this is what you want me to do. Now I was hanging out with, we have some very popular churches here in New York that, you know, they have all the big things and I'm hanging out there. I'm like, well, these people are there on Broadway, Lord, like, what am I supposed to do? You know, like, you know, and then that's when I remember I told you the story about like Vince Lombardi and he was like, well, how, how many times does Vince Lombardi go out on the field? And I'm like, he didn't go on the field. He said, exactly. He taught the people who went out to feel on the field how to be successful. And that's what I'm calling you to do. So one of the things God has showed me is how to, he has given me strategies that anybody could use in order to create worship. Because when you're not a choreographer or anything, that it, people don't talk about, but ministry can be stressful. Okay. Ministry, especially if you, you're ahead of a ministry, it's stressful. And like, it's always like, sometimes you feel like you're always on, you're always pouring out and sometimes you're just empty. And so God gave me these strategies and things that I could do in order to begin to create movement. And I'm like, okay, I get stuck here and I'm like, okay, what do I do here? And then he would bring to mind something. And so that's how I started. And then I began to share it with, with other people is that you don't have to be a trained Juilliard student to worship the Lord. One, you need a heart of worship because that's where it starts and God will provide everything else. So that's how the, the strategies and the things that I came up with came about because many of the people in the body of Christ who are movement ministers are technically trained, but that doesn't mean we can't give our best. Yeah. And so sometimes you'll see the, the people read things over and over again because they don't have any training on how they can take that small movement and turn it into a whole, you know, peace thing here. And so that's what God has given me. That's the, the ability to do that, to teach strategies and, and to look at certain things and see how we as a body can, as Christ can give our very best. And that's one thing that's important to me is that I have to be able to flow. And my excellence may be, I have limited mobility. 
that doesn't mean that I can't serve God in excellence. And that's what he showed me. And maybe I can't raise this psalm, but I sure enough can get wave this one. And so how do I, how do I do that? How can I take this and maybe extend it this way and then take this hand and go up? But I'm still praising the Lord. And I don't have to feel because my limit, my mobility is limited, that my worship has to be limited. And that's how Breakthrough for X Ministry got started. Yeah. I mean, so it's being excellent in the movements that you, that God has given you that there's, there can feel like there's competition and that's just an ugly, that's an ugly spirit. That is not, that's not a spirit of excellence. That's not even a spirit of worship. And there's not a ministry around that, that doesn't seep into at all. But I think that flaggers have to be very careful about that because we're waving around a big piece of fabric. It is shouting, look at me. And if your heart is not right and it's not grounded, the enemy is going to come for you and he's going to take that spirit and he's going to blow on it. So we really have to lay down, but it can also, it can make us puff us up, but it also can diminish our gifts because then we are comparing ourselves to someone who is so beautifully and classically trained and that, and somehow that their worship, you know, is more acceptable. We got into Cain and Abel had an issue with acceptable worship or not. It's about that heart. So, you know, that, that's just a really great, just to reinforce that, what Mm -hmm. you just said. Mm -hmm. And that's why it's so important to learn your craft. There's different kinds of flags for different people, you know, there's all kinds of flags. And so, you know, again, so if your arm, if this arm can't hold, you know, a, a flag up here, your movement can be here. And then again, this arm takes the flag around. You meet here in the middle and you come here and there's always a way that God will show you what to do. Um, and so that's, but that's why it's on my heart that we learn our craft. It's not about, because somebody said to me, you got to learn how to worship. Yeah. 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 Because again, just what you said, what I may think worship is may not be an acceptable worship. So I need to learn my craft. I need to understand what these things in my hand for. And there's something that you said that really touched me is when you said that you are servant with your flags of those who worship them, with them. And that was really touching to me because we have to understand where we fit in. And without you, where do I, how do I go? Where do I go? We're all connected. And so that was really profound for me when you said that you are servant to those who use flags. That's That's amazing. Thank you. Thank you. Can you tell me what is your signature product? If someone, where would people, you have, you have so many resources, like you've got such a large library. It can feel really overwhelming. Tell me what is, what, if someone is like, I, I need what you, you, you've got, what should they start with? I would say start with our flag ministry kit. It's a 40 page ebook. And it goes into, it gives you an introductory guide of how to use flag word, flags. It gives you scriptures because everything we do here at Breakthrough Flags is scripture. It has to come back to a scripture because then it's, then it's us, you know? And so that would be where you start. And it comes with, I was going to say a DVD. I always say DVD because when we first made it, it was a DVD, but we don't do DVDs there right now. But it comes with a recording with different movements that you can use. So that when you are moving your flag, we go, you give you front views, back views. We give you the scripture. And there's something else that you had said about the names of your flags, you know, and and maybe I will go back to that, but like in the video that we have, each flag movement has a name and it has a name for a reason because when God is calling you to move again, you know, people always say I move spontaneously. Okay. But you're really just bringing forth what's up to me. In my world, you're only bringing what's forth, what's already inside of you. That's where it's coming from. And so one of the movements we have is called come and behold. And so come and behold him. And so maybe I'm flagging and maybe there's somebody that's going through something and God wants that person to come and behold him. And so he brings that, that movement to my mind and I go in front of that person and in the spirit, I am saying to them, come and behold the Lord. I don't know what characteristics of the Lord they need. Come and behold your redeemer. Come and behold your healer. Come and behold your deliverer. I don't know, but I'm just responding to what God has called me to do. So I think it's very important to have these things so that when we are ministering, I'm not just waving the flag, but like you said, I'm prophetically speaking into the the atmosphere of what God is calling out of me. And so I think that our ministry kit would be the best place to start to get an introduction to us. 
can you you do have i think a copy there can you just show them so they would know what to look for on the yes. website so this is the ebook okay yeah. and i'm gonna show you how the dvd but it's it, you know it's a video recording so yeah, yeah it has um yeah it's a it's a nice size it comes has a lot of stuff in here why flags are used in the bible communicating with flags flags used for battle advancing the kingdom of God using flags four different ways. And yeah, so I think that's a great way for you to begin to understand how you use flags. And one of the things in Break the Flags Ministry, our tagline is purposeful, powerful phrase. We want to do everything with purpose. I did a video one time and I was playing the song. Back in the day, you used to have a song called Kung Fu. And I was going like this with the flag and everything. And I said, flag worship is not karate. Because, you know, they think they're warfare. But all you're doing is beating up the air because there's nothing behind it. So, you know, in, in some cases, there's nothing behind it. And so, but if you were learned about how to use flags in battle, that's another different story. I have one last question for you. I always ask this. What is your favorite Catch the Fire Worship Flags flag? Let's see. The white ones I have. I love them. I, I love them. And for me, white is represents the Holy Spirit. And I love the way that they flow and that they move. Because when I go into a place, I want to invite the Holy Spirit because he's the one who does the work. So those are the ones that are my favorite. Uh, thanks. And and they happen to be the best sellers all year, year after year after year. So not a surprise that those are the ones that you <laughs> picked. Yes. Your contact information is going to be in the show notes, but why don't you tell people where they can find you? Okay. We are on Facebook, Breakthrough Flags Ministries. We are Instagram, Breakthrough Flags Ministries. Um, where you can go, you can find out all the information of us. And we also have a website, BreakthroughFlagsMinistries.com. You can find a lot of information. We have a blog, how to use flags, all that good stuff like that. And I look forward to hearing from you. Also on our website, you can leave comments, let us know how we connected. We would love to be able to continue to worship with you and raise the praise for the Lord. Amen. And I just want to remind you to go to her website and sign up for her email list. She sends yeah. out some really encouraging emails just to keep you connected, keep that heart of worship at the focus. So thanks again. Thank you. It's been an honor and a pleasure. I look forward to what God has in store for both of us and in the kingdom. Amen. So Pat, thank you again for joining me for this Firecatchers chat. It's just a real delight to be able to highlight what you're doing in the kingdom of God for flagging worshipers. And, and thanks again for the viewers who are watching. If you have a flagging testimony and would like to share it with Firecatchers chat, please contact me. Um, my email is in the show notes. Don't forget to like and follow so that you'll know when we post more videos like this.